week saw the release of The End Is Nigh, a brand new game from Super Meat Boy and Binding of Isaac developer Ed McMillan. But what you might not know, unless you're old like me of course, is that 23 years earlier another game named The End Is Nigh was released, only this one won't have you lobbing your controller at the wall in a fit of platforming induced rage. Zenobi Software's The End Is Nigh was released in 1994. It's a text adventure written by Jonathan Scott and Stephen Boyd, and it's the fourth game in the Zikov trilogy. Yeah, I, I know that doesn't make much sense, but to be honest, not much in this game does. So the Zikov trilogy started in 1990 with the release of Escape from Hodgkin's Manor. It continued a year later with Red Alert, and then a year after that the third instalment was released, titled The Beginning of the End. Those three games and The End Is Nigh cast you as a young paperboy named Fred, who's caught up in an increasingly bizarre and eccentric plot, which involves him trying to take down the villainous Sir Basil Hodgkin's PhD. To fully explain the storyline of the whole series would take hours, because it's completely bonkers, but I'll try my best to give you some idea of the proceedings. It all kicks off in The Escape from Hodgkin's Manor, with Fred becoming trapped inside the grounds of said manor after a rogue crowbar to his bike tyre sends him hurtling over the perimeter fence. Fred then has to escape the manor using, among many other things, computer components from a company named Zikov Software. So far, so fairly normal, I guess. Not for long, though. Set sometime after the events of the first game, the second game in the series, Red Alert, sees Hodgkin's manor destroyed by a severe bout of hay fever and a hearty sneeze from old Basil. Okay. This disaster then prompts the Hodgkins to retreat to their secret island, where they build a missile capable of destroying the Earth, which they intend to use to hold the world to ransom. Their demands? A new house, one with a swimming pool. Right. Fred scuppers their plans, of course, and this leads us to the events of the third game, The Beginning of the End, which is when the story well and truly shits the bed. This time, Basil has made his way to the centre of the Earth, where he's found and dismantled an ancient Incan device called the Machine of Total Control, which somehow sustains sanity on the planet. Of course, it's up to Fred to save the day again, this time by travelling through time, space, and the length and breadth of Tooting to gather up all the components for the busted machine. Are you still with me? Because at this point, I'm not even sure I'm still with me. Anyway, The End Is Nigh follows straight on from the events of the previous game, with Fred on the trail of the final components needed to fix the machine of total control. The game plays out in three parts, each more bonkers than the next. In the first part, the Victorian zone, Fred is granted lightning powers by a genie, he crawls under the Queen's skirt, gets locked in prison, and discovers the ghost of Guy Fawkes living underneath Parliament. In part two, the interstellar zone, Fred gets transported to space where he meets robots, clones and aliens. And in part three, the subterranean zone, Fred finally manages to fix the machine of total control and defeat Basil. But that's only after hanging out at the bottom of the sea for a while with Neptune, a mermaid and a starfish that wears headphones. Look, to be honest with you, The End Is Nigh is a little bit too silly, even for my tastes. It's like the writers were trying too hard to be funny, and there's a couple of questionable things in here that really don't sit too well with today's sensibilities, and I'm pretty sure they would have been frowned upon in the mid-90s as well. But all that aside, there is something about The End Is Nigh that I find absolutely fascinating, and that's the way it was distributed. Here we have an original Spectrum Disc version of The End Is Nigh. Now, you might be wondering where the box is. Well, my friends, this is it. This is how it came packaged when you bought it, in a plastic case with a photocopied cover shoved inside showing what format the game was on. In fact, this is pretty much how every Zenobi game was packaged, and that's because Zenobi is actually one of the oldest independent games publishers around. 
Zenobi Software first came to be in 1984 and it was responsible for releasing over 200 text adventure games. It was created by John the Rochdale Balrog Wilson, who after playing text adventures on a friend's ZX81 decided to try his hand at making his own. His games proved incredibly popular and soon he was unable to keep up with demand for new adventures, so he put out word that he was looking for other authors for the label, and before long, Zenobi Software was a fully-fledged publishing house. And house is the operative word here, because as you can see from the back of this packaging, each and every game produced by Zenobi Software was done by John from his house in Rochdale. Every order from around the world was sent to his home and from there he used a bank of twin deck tape recorders to produce the cassette games along with dedicated computers to produce the disc versions. Once processed he packaged all the games by hand including this one right here and sent them out in jiffy bags along with photocopies of all their respective documents, some of which you saw earlier on in this video. Things eventually got so busy for John that at one point he was taking two to three carrier bags full of parcels to the post office every day. In fact, the man at the post office used to rub his hands with glee every time he saw John approaching the counter. All right, so at this point, some of you may have noticed that even though the front of this packaging says Spectrum, the disc inside isn't actually a plus three disc. I mean, look, it doesn't even go in the disk drive. It's too damn big! Well, the reason for this is because The End Is Nigh, like most Sonobi releases, came out on multiple physical formats, including cassette, Spectrum Plus 3 discs, and in the case of this release, for the Spectrum Plus D disk system. The Daytel Plus D was a floppy disk interface which allowed you to connect different types of disk drive to the various specy models. You can see it in action here in this video from YouTuber Gerhard Jungsberger, where he uses it to load an actual Zenobi release onto a 48k Spectrum. Now, while this might seem like an obscure format to release your games on, Zenobi's Plus D sales still accounted for about 5-10% to of the total weekly sales, although thanks to the extra space they afforded over standard cassettes and Plus 3 discs, they really came into their own right when Zenobi started releasing compilations. Also, and this is really quite interesting, as the era of the Specky came to a close, John also began producing The End Is Nigh and many other Zenobi games for the Atari ST and the Amiga. These were in the form of emulation only though, so instead of being programmed specifically for each machine, copies of Zenobi's games on those formats came with the original file and a Spectrum emulator included on the disc. So whatever happened to Zenobi Software? Well, it stopped publishing games in 1997, but the Rochdale Bolrog is still around and he regularly posts old Zenobi treasures on his website, zenobi.co.uk. There's a wealth of Zenobi information here, including scans of all the original leaflets and hand-drawn illustrations that went out with every game produced. It's a lovely place to go if you're interested in old-school text adventures, and it's an amazing trip down memory lane for anyone who experienced Zenobi games the first time around. So there we go, that was the End Is Nigh game you never knew existed. Now, you might have guessed the game itself didn't do that much for me, but what it did do was give me, and hopefully you, a unique little insight into the charming history of one of the UK's very first independent video game publishers. If you enjoyed this little look at a long lost The End Is Nigh game, do give this video a like and subscribe for more from Eurogamer. I'm hoping to put up a new episode of Games You Never Knew Existed once every week or so, but if you can't wait for that, why not check out the episodes on screen right now, where I talk about the Witness game you never knew existed, the Crackdown game you never knew existed, the Friday the 13th game you never knew existed, and the Star Fox games you never knew existed. Thanks for watching and do have a lovely day. Goodbye.